I'm Jill, Chief Safety Officer with Vivid Learning Systems. I'm a former OSHA inspector, and I'm here to help you identify and correct workplace safety hazards. For this series, we're at the University of Louisville in beautiful Kentucky to show you no matter where you work, safety is for everyone. Magnetic resonance, or magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI as it's co commonly known, is used in hospitals, clinics, imaging centers, zoos, aquariums, and research facilities like the one we're at today at the University of Louisville Medical School. Now when we think about MR safety, we often think about the patient. We're not always thinking about the employee, but today we're talking about employee safety considerations with magnetic resonance. And with me, I have Paul Harper, who is a board certified MRI technologist. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So Paul, can you explain just briefly, what does a magnetic resonance imaging do? How does it work? Well, what we're gonna do is put you in a very strong magnetic field, mm -hmm. use a radio wave, and with those combinations, we are going to take some pictures of the inside of your body. Uh, primarily soft tissues like the brains, your organs, and sometimes we'll do uh, extremities. Okay, very good. So what are the primary safety considerations for employees when it comes to MR safety? Our number one concern when anyone enters an MRI suite is to remember the MRI magnet is always, always on. Mm. We never turn it off. Um, it never goes down nightly for any maintenance. It has to stay up. Okay. Okay, very good. And so I understand that the MR suite is where the actual magnet is, but there's zones around that and four, four primary zones. Can you talk about yes. what those zones are? The four zones are aligned uh, for a safety aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, zone one is considered anything outside of the suite. So the hallways, anything adjacent to that. Zone two would be like a patient prep area. You bring a patient in, they can change and uh, lock up their belongings. Mm -hmm. Zone three is actually where we are today right here okay. uh, with all the equipment. This mm -hmm. is where the technologist will control the machine mm -hmm. and um, guide the patient throughout the study. Mm -hmm. And the last zone is zone four, which is where the magnet, as you can see behind us, is housed. And so when you're doing your work, you're primarily in zone three. Correct. Okay. And so what's dangerous about, um, about MR? Well, the biggest danger is bringing anything into the environment that is ferromagnetic. Okay. Um, to be labeled as ferromagnetic, it means it has a type of magnetic property. So with our machine always being on, it doesn't discriminate. If it's magnetic, it will pull it in. And so um, worst case, well, maybe not worst case scenario, but it, let's say someone has um, like a scissor in their, in their pocket and they go into the MR suite, what can happen? With something as small as scissors, it most likely will have a ferromagnetic property. Okay. What will happen is it will pull it towards the machine. If it is dense enough and has enough um, mass behind it, it will stay stuck to the machine. In a case like that, what we can do is go in there, pull it off the machine, most likely with two hands, mm -hmm. and then get it out of the environment. Wow. So how do you know if a metal is ferromagnetic or not? Well, any pure metal, such as gold, silver, platinum, titanium, titanium, tungsten, is non-ferromagnetic, a pure metal. Okay. Where things start becoming ferromagnetic is it becomes a combination of different metals. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. So someone, if they had a wedding ring on, uh, would be fine. Would be fine. Yes. Okay, because it's pure. Assuming, assuming that it's right. pure. Okay. As long as we don't have to scan the anatomy around that area, yeah. they can keep it on. Okay. And so, what um, safety consider, or I guess, what kinds of employees need training, and what kind of training would they need? Well, anyone that would be coming into the uh, magnet for any reason, it could be a, it could be a technician, it could be a nurse, uh, janitorial services. Uh, doctors, nurses, anybody else that would need a reason to go into the scanner. So even like a contractor, if they were to come into the area to work on something not related to the, to the magnet itself, maybe somebody needs to work on an outlet or something in the room, they would need training as well. Yes. What are some of the things that you'd train employees on for those working in those zones? Well, we usually put in uh, a video information for them, 
and go over like a classroom setting, um, go over a tutorial of the room, what can go into the room, what shouldn't go, and at the end of the day, if they have any questions, just ask us and we can help them out. So I bet some of those primary things are the magnets always on and what ferromagnetic metals are. Correct, yeah. Right. Okay, so you've said the magnet is always on. Why is the magnet always on? Well, it is filled with liquid helium. Mm. That helium is being pumped through it to cool down what are called the coils. That helps get us the images. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to do that, it is almost at zero Kelvin. So with the liquid helium, it keeps it cool. Mm -hmm. It's not something uh, as easy to do as just flipping a switch on and off. Okay. It's a very controlled process in order to bring uh, the machine up to operating procedure. Mm -hmm. Right. If there's an emergency in the MR suite and the magnet has to be turned off, oh, like actually off, yeah, great question. What happens? Well, we have two ways to turn off power to the machine. Okay. One way is just to kill the power, and that would take all the electricity down. Mm -hmm. The second way is to do what's called a quench. Mm -hmm. uh, a quench is where you release all of the helium out of the scanner. Mm -hmm. When that happens, it loses its magnetic field, when, and um, that takes approximately about 30 seconds. After that, then there's no more magnetic field and you can proceed from there. So then anyone would be safe to go into the, into the MR suite itself Correct. to respond to an emergency. You wouldn't Correct. have to be making sure you were removing your ferromagnetics at that point. Correct. Okay, very good. Um, what about um, fire department planning? I know that you've done some specific work with your local fire department on how to respond in the zones. What, what were the steps that you took and what did you do with your fire department? Not every facility is manned 24-7. Some facilities may shut down for the night, but once again, the scanner's always on. Right. So we got with the local fire department and put together a video so when they would have to respond facility after hours, they would know, hey, we need to uh, make sure that someone is either here to shut this off, you know, they're a walking fire hazard, or right. MRI danger as far as we're concerned. Right. They have on their SCBAs, they'll have the hatchets, you know, flashlights, everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that video, we set it up to make sure they know what to do, uh, who to contact at the facility, and the steps they need to take to keep themselves safe also. So if a fire alarm is going off in the middle of the night and the local fire department shows up like they would, right. they need to know how to keep themselves safe and to um, in, in maintain the integrity of your of your magnet as well Correct. right Correct. right interesting thank you paul so much for for helping us today this is really interesting information um, so remember the magnet is always on as paul said and that it's really important to identify all the types of employees and contractors and emergency response personnel who may be in contact with one of the four zones so that they have the proper training to keep themselves safe I hope you gained a safety skill today. If you know someone who needs this, go ahead and pass it on. Safety is everyone's business.